Hi everyone, so today I've come to do a little um, craft with me. I'm going to make a single signature journal and it's very quick and easy, um, perfect for beginners. So I'm just trying to gather everything, I'd piled it all up to one side. So here I've picked my papers, I'm going to use this for my cover and these papers here are from my new elements kit you get two pages of collage sheets in that so i've coffee dyed them and i've trimmed them all around because there was a little bit of a white border i've got um four sheets of coffee dyed paper this is going to be uh, a journal that is uh 40 pages front and back i've got some digital ephemera that i've printed out this is from the old design shop this is from bohemian crafting that is eva this is from the old design shop and so is that um so to start with i am going to my like my main pages not this one because that's going to be from my cover let's move that somewhere else Okay, I'll get to the cover shortly. Right, so I'm not making a like a, a big like fat journal as I just said. I am gonna make a, like a TN size journal. So with this, I'm gonna score like what size I want the journal to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go for um, four and a quarter inches, which is ten and a half centimeters for those that work in centimeters um, you can use um, you know if you don't have a scoring board tool or whatever then just measure it and fold it and line it up properly so I'm going to take it over again to the four and a quarter and I might keep this as um, a pocket so I'll just score that and then I'll put that to one side and then this one I am going to I'm going to turn it around this way because of how I want to do it <laughs> it's just um because I want to keep this side with the butterfly so I don't want it kind of folded over or I don't want it trimmed off if I choose to trim it off so again four and a quarter that's ten and a half and then again my eyesight is poo um my glasses are sitting right there as well so that like so so then I've got my um, coffee dyed papers and I'm just gonna cut them to the same size, the same width. I'll trim off the bottoms of it in a minute because I don't not know exactly what the length is of that at the moment. Um, make sure that's nice and uh, folded nice and crisp so that we get a good line. So that's four of them. You could bunch them together and do it, but I'm just going to do it like this. And I'm hoping this video is not going to be too long. Um, and four and a quarter. And this is the Stampin' Up trimmer that they no longer do. So I don't have the blade, so I just use my my blade, one of my blades. I've got loads of different types of blades. Um, if you want to keep them for making ruffles, perfect. So I'm just going to pop them in my drawer all right sit them up and that's that for the moment okay so then i'll come back with these and where's my score lines so i will fold them and this paper that i'm using is navigator and this is the 120 gsm i don't know what that is in in pounds so I'm just folding that and I do the same here. You can see I've got a little bit of a, a white bit where I missed that when I was trimming it. And then just fold that over, it should meet nicely. If not, just shuffle it up a little bit and do that. Okay, right, so right there both the same size I'm just checking so I'll just tuck that in there like so make sure it's right at the top and then I will trim off the little bit that I don't want now, obviously there's many other ways you can do this if you want to measure I might have to put a new blade in with that so I'm going to do that now so I get these from my son uh, he works at a, uh, a it's called Brewers oh, it doesn't work now <laughs> There we go, and it slides out nicely. It's all kept safe in there. 
um, that comes out. I put that in a glass jar until it's full and then get rid of. Well, my husband gets rid of it. I don't know what he does with it, but he gets rid of them securely. So I'll just set that to one side just now. So I'll just trim that off. So yeah, they're handy to have. You don't need like special tools. You can just buy any old craft knife. Um, so I'm just trimming these down. So I'll put two of them together. It's just easier. I'm going to trim that. Sorry if you can hear my fan, but it's very warm. It's very muggy here today. Horrible it is. Um, and we've been given um, more like heat wave warnings for the end of this week. It's been, you know, we're not built for it over here in the UK. We really, really aren't. And, um, you know, there was terrible fires and there were still, fires were still happening even up until yesterday. Some major ones near Heathrow Airport as well, which was causing problems there. Right, so that's them. So I've got two lots of like the ephemera that I'm going to put in. What I do then, I kind of group things together, right? But I will for this. I just kind of think, right, where do I want that? And I look there and I just fold. That's just how I do it. I don't do any measuring. I just do it all by eye. Do it all by eye, right? And I will put that there. And then with this one, making sure it's the right way, I can either kind of match that up or if I wanted to do, like, say that more central, I would put that there and do it like that. But I want that to be up a little bit and I want that roughly to be the same size. So I will just pinch it there and then fold. And I haven't even checked if I'm in frame. So I've kept I'm going to be using my sewing machine you can see I didn't cut that very well either because this one has got a little bit of a funny edge to it so it when you cut it it's, I'll never ever get it right <laughs> so that goes there like so okay then these two pieces where's the other coffee dyed paper um that because that is like well it's not actually full length so about here and then I'll fold that there. Just depends on how you want, like how you, your papers, like inside your journal, how you want them. Fold them or cut them to size. This one I'm going to do like that. So just guessing it to be about here. And that will go there. Then I just tuck that in there tuck that one in here, find the centre, pop that in, right, and that's me got, that, so that's 10 pages, folded in half, 40 sides, okay, so um, I'm not going to stitch on this one, um, or shall I, no I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and it's not because I had a comment the other day saying that stitching looked awful on journals. <laughs> uh, so many ladies stitch on their journals. It's personal preference, um, you know, if you want stitching or not. So I'll come in with my ruler. You can clip these together. I don't because um, I've been doing it that long. I'm pretty good at judging it. So make sure it's all in line. You've got all your pages. Let me go back. You've got all your pages as you want them in your journal and you've got them laid out the way you want them. If you want to clip them, I don't even have, oh, I've got a massive big clip here. Okay, just wreck the place to, to find it and you could just do that up the top and then I've got another one. No, not handy, but then do another one down here, keeping it all in place, okay. So hold that down, use my ruler, find the center point with the Tim Holtz ruler. You've got your center point at zero and I will always go in the zero, make a little mark. You can, if you wanna go two or you wanna go three, depending on the size of your journal, I'm gonna go two 
and then find two down here if you don't you can make a little template i've seen people do that they make a little template and they just mark it you know according to the size but i haven't done that in years because i have the ruler and it does the job for me so you can use a thick needle you can use an all i don't because i find that i end up making the holes way too big again that is my personal preference and i just put that through like so and it works i've actually got a, a i don't know a cradle i've got that but it's buried underneath a lot of stuff so find the other hole and pierce through 99.9 percent .9 of the time i get it right there is odd times where it's like uh oh but you know like i said if you want to clip it all then do so okay so that is my signature ready okay and obviously that will get decorated so for the cover i have i started this and then i thought right i'm going to do a video on this because i do get asked a lot so this is some coffee dyed cardstock this is oh i can't remember 280 gsm um so i'm just having a little bit of coffee excuse me so um yeah coffee dyed only done the one side because this side's going to get covered and as you can see the splodges everywhere so what i do is i find i fold it in half okay then i get my martha stewart board and where i folded it in half i find the six on here right so that is like that's my middle to me okay and then um i'm just checking it i am in frame yet <laughs> uh I score down there then I take it up three little marks which is like three eighths of an inch I think yep and do that the other side it just gives a little bit of a rather than it just being folded in half like that and your journal like gaping it just gives a little bit of a spine okay and you can kind of manipulate that when you've got your journal when you've got your signature inside your journal and you've filled it you can kind of wiggle it around a little bit but i'll show you that in a bit okay so we will need this again all right i'm just going to set that to one side so now i bring this back in right and i just i pop that up there to there i leave a little bit of a gap top and bottom i will probably only take off a skim at the bottom of this and then i mark about let me see i don't know because like i said i do like eyeball all this um i don't know what that is let me just guess. let me just guess let me just measure um what that is just for so it's about half an inch maybe just slightly under okay and then i trim that off but what i'm going to do with this because i'm trying to get this cut um straight in this for some reason it never works for me so i just score it down there then i come in with my knife but if you've got a really good trimmer then you know it will do the job but the, the way i'm working it's not that brilliant and using the metal edge side of the ruler or if you've got a metal ruler then just score that down there they may come in handy for something so that gets put over that side and i'm only going to take a smidge off of there just a smidge okay then obviously i open it up with the white side facing but if you're using like um i say another uh scrapbooking cardstock or something like that make sure that um you know you're gonna stick on like whatever you're sticking on the other side of it see there's a little gap there i don't mind that top and bottom because what i will do is once i've stitched around that i will just ink it up okay so um my glue right this is just holding it in place right i just go down the spine i'm gonna go round of the sides um and just down through the middle because i don't want any kind of like air bubbles you could use a wet glue to do this but i'm just using this because it does work just the same just the same it does um i am going to get my sewing machine in in frame in a minute that's why i moved my um my camera set up i won't be able to um 
speed up or silence me using the sewing machine but it is only going to take a little bit I should have used wet glue but the reason I'm not using like a wet wet glue is because obviously it's gonna have to dry and this dries rather quickly okay and obviously because I'm doing a video right so I can't get my head right over to kind of match this up but if you've got like longer cardstock then you can so this paper here is from Artie Mays and it was a freebie on I don't know which um, month it was but she done a freebie on her Facebook group it may be on her coffee shop um, but I don't know so I'm just using an old um, card here just to smooth it down because I don't want any air bubbles just like that and you can use a brayer on top of that if you have or just if you don't have like anything like that just use a little ruler and just go across it like so you don't need any magic tools um, then I'm just going to trim this off down here and keep that because that will come in handy <laughs> that's why I've got so much scraps because I just keep everything okay right so excuse all the banging and the stuff that's going to happen now when I bring in the sewing machine my bowl has just gone on my sewing machine as well so um I can't use it I've ordered one so hopefully right what you're looking at you're looking at the top of the sewing machine right now so I've got this on um just like a slight zigzag it's kind of dusty in here actually <laughs> um and i've got it on four i don't know if you can see that i'm having to move that around because i can't move my camera all right and i start at the bottom of the back of the cover the bottom of the back all right and let's get this done really really quickly Sorry, this is really noisy because it's on my um, glass mat as well, so it kind of makes a right racket. I've got to move that forward because I've got too much stuff in front of me. Whoops, and let's move that back. Just like so. If you don't, um, if you don't have a sewing machine, obviously you don't have to sew. <laughs> or if you don't like sewing, you don't have to do it. Um, right, that's that out of the way. And where is my scissors? Okay, that's what I say a lot. Where's my scissors? <laughs> uh, okay, there's a there's a little bit jumped up there, as you can see. I'll sort that out in a minute. So we can still see the lines. Okay. So I'm going to just bring this back in and again find that middle score already that I've done already which I can't see so I'm going to have to put my glasses on okay there we go I still can't see it because it's the light there we go and I'm just going to run that down there so that it kind of shows on the other side just exactly the same marks that we've already scored or I've already scored Okay, I don't know what that funny mark is. Oh, that's a bit of glue. Yeah, it always happens when you're on camera, doesn't it? <laughs> right. If I say in about five minutes, where's my glasses? They're on my head, okay? Because um, I've got a habit of losing them as well, and they're literally on my head. So there's still a little bit of weight here that I'm going to trim off with the um, with the border that was there. I'm just gonna go. This is just see, you don't need to go out and buy all the fancy um, blending brushes. A lot of people use makeup brushes, these are little sponges that my friend sent to me, and she sent me loads of them, and they're absolutely great. Um, although, after a while, my fingers get really, really inky. 
Okay, see, you, you don't even see that now because obviously it's all been blended in. Okay, so now we will wipe that mess up just like that. Look that oh, look how cute this is. Bumblebee kitchen paper. How cute is that? <laughs> anyway, right, back with this. That's just the glue, that will rub off. Um, okay, so with the centre, um, uh, that's my front, okay, so I'm sitting my front, I'm just dropping my pencil now, let me go find, and I've just bumped the camera, let me just go find my pencil that's fell on the floor. There we go, found the pencil, my floor's a mess, I've got a big massive bin next to me, right, and I miss it all the time. Anyway, right, again, finding the centre point, which is... So it works out from there to there, it is four and one, is that one eighth? One eighth, okay. And obviously it will be the same the other side. And if you've got a template, then use your template. Mark here in the middle, the center where it says zero. Then at two, because that's what we've done with the signature. And then two there as well, okay. Now again, you can use your thick darning needle or an awl, but I'm not really keen on that. I use that for making, um, you know, when you punch out little circles and you put like, make them as little st stopper things when you're doing like a policy envelope. I use it for that. So I just put, put the needle through on the marks. I'm going to be putting some, oh, what I did mean to say as well, if I'm going to put some lace on the outside on the spine of that, but if you if you're not going to do that, then maybe in between these in between um, this layer and the other layer, about say maybe about that much of fabric or what's that other stuff? Craftex, not Craftex. The stuff that builders use, you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I haven't bought it in ages. So wax linen thread. This one is brown. I have white. I've also got a block of wax, beeswax, because I like, this isn't overly waxy. Um, I'm going to use the white anyway. So I am going to take off roughly, I'll go one, two, and three. Was that? Yep, about that much, about three lengths of that um, to sew in my signature. And then I just, as you can see all the little marks on there, I'm just rubbing the wax linen thread down at the beeswax just for some extra. It helps it, I think it helps it glide through the holes. Okay, right, so we will put that through there like so. Now, making sure you have got your cover the right way round, okay, so that away, and then you've got your signature the right way up, so it's going to be in there the right way, and I just, sometimes I'm lucky, look at that, it went straight through, doesn't always do that, okay, and I feed that through. I've seen people do this different ways, this is how I do it, I'm happy doing it this way. You can do a five whole pamphlet stitch if you want, um, but I'm just doing the two. That goes through there and like I say, it didn't, all, didn't go through all of them this time. And just make sure it goes through all your pages. I've done that before and then my pages have fell out. <laughs> it's like, oh, how did that happen? But it's clearly not paying attention. All right, so that comes through. Oops. I need to put that back on. Clever, isn't I? Peen I. <laughs> um, gosh knows how long this video. I should have timed it, but I forgot. So you can either go up in through there. I actually go through the middle again. Okay. And let's see if it's going to go. Probably not. Um, making sure that you don't actually put the needle through the actual um, wax linen thread. There we go, that's gone through nicely. Go in there, and I'll just, it's loose at the moment, but I will, you know, I'll tighten all that up, okay? And then up into the top hole, 
in through the signature and it went through most of them and there we go mind you don't like pierce yourself then I go in through there like so then I will pull and make sure everything is tight not overly tight because you don't want to rip the paper okay so I'm at an angle because obviously I need to be able to see all right so just make sure it's all nice and tight and just pull them all through like so I go up and over and through again like that it's probably got a special note name um, it's not working this time right so what I would just do I normally do two it's like one maybe it's that way I do it see I just do it automatically now yeah it's like that I'm gonna leave that dangling because I don't know what I'm gonna do whether I'm just gonna tie it in a bowl whether I'm gonna add some little dangles to it or beads or anything else so that is how you make a single signature journal and this is what I mean about these little bits here just gives it a little bit of a spine okay rather than it being just completely like flat all right so there we go that could be a little flip that's gonna be a flip out it's too big to be a pocket and that's me got my pages in and I'm ready to do whatever I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet I might come back and show you just little bits that I'm uh, that I'm gonna put into this but there we go how quick and easy was that who knows how long that video took but there we go so I thought I would just do that for you because I do get asked a lot I will put this in my playlist called let's make and you know you check out my other videos if you have any questions just ask and thanks for watching bye